first of all uh <laughs> yeah the title image is pretty funny but that's what i think let's go over my notes here so i can't i'm not gonna answer your questions quite yet but from what i could see uh the it is straight up as good as a 9900k in gaming yes it trades blows here and there but it is markedly better than the 3900x which surprises me a bit it does boost better and it's just better than thread ripper there's no there's no argument for getting Threadripper. I would agree with Steve at Hardware Unboxed for anything more than $500. I, personally, I think Zen 1 Threadripper is completely out of the question too, pretty much at this point, unless you can get it with a motherboard for under 300. It's just, it's, it's just over, you know? AMD keeps moving the bar forward. They're not sitting still. This is where we're at at this point. Um, and uh also i agree with steve that you just don't want to overclock this thing and uh you know minus's video was pretty funny too um i do agree i find it weird amd mentioned the 2080 millimeter liquid cooler as a recommendation because it uses as the same or less energy than a 3900x uh I, amd's marketing man i don't know but that brings me to the a couple of things that I only make a video if I have a thought that I believe is unique to what I see out there. Um, and it has to do with the fact that, yes, it requires less voltage, that this is better binning than the 3900X, that in fact, Linus found it used less, it ran at lower temperatures than the 3900X despite having four more cores. What this means, in my opinion, though, is that we're finally seeing at least second tier chiplets for peasant class people like us, you know, people who don't have $1,400 for a CPU, but maybe have 750. But the fact of the matter is it doesn't really overclock any better than the other CPUs. And I think that's really interesting, isn't it? That it runs at markedly lower voltage, uses less energy, even though it has more cores. So this is better binning. And yet still, all-core turbo is limited, as far as I can tell, to like 4.4, 4.5 gigahertz. And what that means is I just don't think Zen 2, any refresh is coming at 5 gigahertz. So that's kind of a unique perspective I want to throw out there right now. Um, you know, is AMD holding the best yields for Epic and probably second best for Threadripper? Yes. But that doesn't mean the better yields will clock to five gigahertz because that's not what we're seeing here, right? It, you, all we're seeing is markedly less power usage. Maybe Zen 3 will run at five gigahertz. I don't know. Um, but Zen 2, even if there's a refresh, I don't think it's happening. I could easily see for, you know, a boost increase to 4.8 gigahertz or 4.9 in a refresh, but I don't think five is in the cards. And if it is, I can assure you it's not going to be any all-core uh, anywhere near that. So that's my takeaway, is that here you are. Here's the proof. AMD is really holding back good yields. Look at it uses like 100-something watts and has double the cores to the 3700X, 3800X, and it boosts higher. I mean, this is truly an impressive product. That's where my thumbnail comes from. This is a 9900K in... The sheets. If you're having fun gaming, this is a 9900K. It's over. It won Cinebench single core. This is over. This is complete obliteration of everything Intel has. Uh, they, Linus said Intel wouldn't even send them a 16 core uh, HEDT model of the i9 because they don't want them to compare it. Like, this is just so over. It's hilarious. There's a few apps, of course, where Intel has some arguable usage, but you really got to do some mental gymnastics to come up with why you'd buy anything Intel anymore. Um, and now we know why they're charging so much for Threadripper for sure. This is the top. If you game and do productivity work and gaming is even a fourth of the equation, this is the CPU to get. And it even supports ECC memory. But if Threadripper, if you're looking at Threadrippers because it's 90% or more about the production. Maybe you game on the weekend for an hour with a Threadripper, right? If you're one of those people. 
but if you if it's almost if gaming doesn't matter almost at all like you, as long as it does 60 hertz you don't care then you were never you know you were never going to worry about the price anyways because every person i've talked to about the thread ripper is coming out they're buying them at launch. None of them have questioned it. They say, of course, I'll pay an extra $100 over last generation if it's 50% better. And that's, now we get it. I know Cortex gave AMD shit, but now I get it. Now I get why AMD insists on charging so much money uh, for the Threadrippers, because anyone who actually wants them is going to pay that money, and they think it's a bargain. And it's just not for someone who is buying these CPUs for even 33% of its usage. It shouldn't even enter into the equation if you think about it. So I've got, I would say, another few minutes. I've actually got a, uh, <laughs> on my lunch break, I've got a presentation I've got to give to upper management about quarter three results. So if you guys got any last minute questions or thoughts about anything going on right now, this is pretty much it. I'm busy. I've got another video. I've got a I've got saved and it's a big one. It's a good forum cop episode that I will be launching this weekend. But there was a small adpocalypse this morning, guys. I don't know if you know that. <laughs> and so I actually pulled the video I was gonna have come out at noon because I don't want YouTube to be down or my monetar my monetization to be destroyed. So I'm just gonna give it a day to make sure <laughs> YouTube isn't crashing or something ridiculous. And uh, I thought I'd get my thoughts out there about the 3950X. And those thoughts are that I am 100% impressed. Uses less energy than I thought. It can't hit 5 gigahertz. But does anyone care about 5 gigahertz anymore? All right. Any, let's see, any last minute questions? See, but it's like practically the same gaming performance. I think people need to drop the practically it is the same gaming performance it's the exact same gaming performance and it wins in some games it's the same gaming performance it's not practically one percent isn't practically ten percent is practically the same it's the same gaming performance and in fact in i think linus showed in a lot of 95th percentiles it was winning Also, plug your website. Thank you, Carbon Cry. Uh, Carbon Cry website is www.moreslawsdead. You describe it in the comments here, Carbon Cry. I don't want to, uh, you know. There's no need to timestamp this video. This will. I'm leaving in a minute. All right, if there's no last minute questions, I do need to go very soon. We didn't, I see a lot of people saying they're mad I didn't, uh, you know, I can't, there's like a hundred questions popping up, guys. So if you don't tip, I might not notice it. Someone said, should I wait for Zen 3? I mean, I, <laughs> I'm, I've, I've been giving the same advice consistently. If you have a need to upgrade, if you have a reason to upgrade, stop waiting. We're innovating every year now. Look at Zen to Zen Plus to Zen 2 to Zen 3 to Zen 4. It's not ever going to stop innovating. So if you need to upgrade, do it now. But if you don't need to, I don't think there's a reason to come up with a reason to upgrade. There's, this, there's no Sandy Bridge coming. There's no Sandy Bridge coming from either AMD or intel and what i mean by there's no sandy bridge coming is there's no cpu like the 2600k that you're gonna buy and you won't need to upgrade for 10 years because it'll still be the best that's not happening anymore we're getting big performance boosts every year you there's no cpu that's the perfect one to get for the next 10 years there will always be something better over the next 10 years and, and some people would say that's always true. That has not always been true. That has not always been true. That's true now. If you bought an older i7, you did not need to upgrade until now. That wasn't true before, though. Anyone who went from like an Ivy Bridge i7 to a Haswell got almost no boost. That's just not the case anymore, though. But I'm glad I answered that question because a lot of people keep asking me that. 
And uh, we'll be discussing this in much more detail in the next Broken Silicon. I also have a Broken Silicon coming um, with someone from Sapphire. So you guys will probably enjoy that, right? Uh, there's the 11 Years of Being a PC Gamers series coming and a lot more of that. Uh, but yeah, all right, I'm giving it 30 more seconds. Yeah, I was going to use some wireless mic, but it was having major problems. I said, I just got to start. Yeah, I mean, if you have Zen 1 or Zen Plus, unless you really want 144 hertz gaming, I don't really see what the worry is. Well, CPU is really our commodity in the server space, Thaddeus. Listen to the server engineer episode of Broken Silicon. All right. I do have to go. Thanks for watching. Those are my thoughts on the 3950X. It's more impressive than I expected it to be. Uses less energy, but uh, and but it doesn't boost as high as I might have hoped it would. But you know what? It's a 9900K gaming, and it beats last gen Fed Ripper by like 30% while using dual channel memory. Who cares about 5 gigahertz anymore? All right. Peace, everybody.